Okay, Brian, we're going to start on watch number two. Um, to me, equally as stunning, of course, is a beautiful example um, of a pansexual from the, in this case, uh, this is from 1971, November. And if we look at your dial, which I've already taken off because we were going to swap out those components, this is 1D, right? So that's a month after. So first, uh, 71, December. So perfect. Everything looks very original and right. So we're good to go. Okay, so as you know, we've taken it out of the case already, and, uh, and this is your, um, your 8010 um, wheel. So we are going to just get started on the calendar side of things. Might as well just put this in a holder here. So I'm just going to point out in this video, we had a little discussion about positioning of, uh, of the timing of the date changeover and the day changeover. And all of that is governed by one thing, or two things actually. So this right here is the component that changes both the day, that's on the in, this top one, and underneath there's another piece, and I'll show you in a moment. Um, which is a just a plastic um, finger that advances um, the inner rotating bezel for the day of the week and that relative position of those two things is what determines when one starts and when one finishes so the as you know the um, the day wheel has uh, two languages, so it rotates around, and the positioning of all these things uh, relative to each other sets the timing of the actual change. And I'll show you those two components that are involved in that just right now. So let's see if we can see them a little bit closer. So this outer one, that has a finger on it right here. And then there's the inner one, and has this finger right here, which rotates around and advances uh, the day, um, or the date. So it's those two components in their relative positions which uh, determines the, the time at which things change on the, on the dial. So these two things fit together, and this notch right here interacts with that one, whoops, with that one divot, or that one little proud point right there. And as they rotate around in the gear, there's a flipping of the calendar. Okay, that may not have been so clear, but the idea is that um, they were in different positions for different watches and different dimes, uh, depending on when they were made, which is kind of cool. The only issue with these movements is that they're so hard to find parts for that when you have something like an old barrel or a worn, um, worn component, sometimes 
it's very difficult to work around that problem. And you know, with your 8010, for example, uh, I think the, the mainspring uh, should be replaced, but there is no, no possible way to do that, um, as far as I know. I could be wrong, but um, that may be something to look into in the future if you're going to keep it for a long term, long term watch. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start tearing down. Um, you know, everything looks very good. It's super clean, which you know again makes me makes me think that this this watch has seen a recent service. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what C1D41 means, um, but that's what's in your case back. There's also another scribe mark um, for three three. 433rd? I have no idea. Anyway, sometimes they're cryptic, but we'll see. Screws are tight. Whoever did this knew what they were doing. Nice and tight. There we go. That's good. That's what you want. Okay. Take this off. Again, I just want to be so gentle with these movements just because they are so well finished that you don't want to add to the any negative history to the watch you know no way do I want to mar any surface these go in here from the side there we go spring at the moment. Almost quite a bit of lubrication on top here. Uh, eh, it's just residual. Oh, that's not too bad. That was an overreaction. Okay, let's take this die. Shock out. Alright. Easiest way is sometimes just to Turn it upside down and let it fall its way out of there. Also just grab it here. Make sure it comes out. to have lubrication too. Okay, that's good. Peace of mind. Hmm. Under high magnification you can see some scoring on the top of your, your movement here, which is, you know, just the way it goes sometimes. adding to the negative, we're doing good. Keeping it positive. Let's check out this guy. See if he's got, yeah, he's got a nice dot of lubricant right there. Okay. Keep going. Just keep swimming. It's getting late on a Friday. 
start singing kids movie songs all right let's take that balance out being ever so careful little bit of marring on that screw but uh, you know that's a little okay Be real careful with those ballots some blue your spring looks good in first glance we'll see how it actually performs you know the hair springs on these are very very hard to come by and sometimes their performance a very slight shift um, can alter their performance dramatically. So, uh, I think somebody tried to get into that barrel. Hmm. Well, let's check that more closely. There's a rumor on the internet that you could open these barrels, but I avoid it, mostly because if you damage it, you're done. I don't want to be done. I want to continue to work on your watch. So I'll trade a little bit of performance for a lot of not function. <laughs> um, but you know that's uh, that's just me. Um, the thing is, you know, even with a little less power than uh, boy, it's got some got some wear on it. Um, a little less power than 100%. These things are so accurate that some loss in the barrel due to uh, due to just old grease because they're such a sealed unit. Um, you know, it's just a it's just a thing you have to kind of live with with a 50-year-old watch um, that doesn't have replacement parts available. different philosophies. I'd rather get your watch running and make sure it's in great shape. Okay, let's take a close look at things here. Yeah, somebody opened that barrel, I think, or at least they tried. I'm not sure how far they got. Mm. They even scratched a big Z into it. Whether that was intentional or not, I'm not sure. Well, we'll see what the performance looks like once we get it uh, get it running, but hopefully there isn't any, any issue at all. I don't think there will be. Um, yeah. Okay. Onward. Keep on moving. Train looks good. There's a little bit of schmutz on your third wheel, but that'll come off in the cleaner. Everything else looks pretty good. Your hack is straight, or as straight as it should be. Um, flat, I should say. Pivots look good. Okay, good. This was a runner. I mean, this was running when we when we started, so that's always a great place to start. Yeah, screws are nice and tight. Challenge me, screws. Make me work. Uh -huh. That was pretty, pretty stuck. All right, we'll keep going. There's your fourth wheel. Looks good. There's your third wheel. Looks good. Nice. 
okay well and your footed hack hack with a foot there's your barrel I don't know if you can see this but uh, there's some crimping or edging or something on your barrel and a Z why there's a Z, but there seems to be a Z. Okay. Keep on going. Take off your center rail. Bridge, cock, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And voila. Oh, Z put another mark. Z did some work. Man, I really hate that. Jeez, that really upsets me. Hmm. Well, no harm, but somebody uh, was under the impression that they needed to mark this Z for Zippy. I don't know what for, but um, they put a Z on here and a Z on there. I don't like that. I don't like scribing nameplates. It's one thing to put your jeweler's mark in the back of a case back, but put it on the nameplate. I don't know. Anyway, it's my uh, my opinion, which is worth what you paid for it. Okay. Let's get your dial screws put in a little bit so that we don't have to deal with those later. Okay, there we are, broken down. Every piece, ready for cleaning. Um, we'll get to the putting together. Okay, Brian, it's Saturday. Um, this is your 8,000 movement. Um, I have a few concerns. Um, the amplitude numbers aren't where I would like them to be. Um, and I'm going to take a closer look at a few things, but um, the thing that, that concerns me the most is that somebody's been in the barrel, and I don't know, when you get your 8010 back, you'll notice that the winding, the self-winding on this is really challenging. Um, the, the reason is, is because the mainspring has so much power, and overcoming that, um, that, that really thick mainspring is, is challenging. What I've noticed with this, when I put the crown back on uh, and stem, is that there's not much resistance to wind. And f to run this high beat movement, you need a lot of power. And that usually requires that the mainspring be um, super strong. And so um, I fear that perhaps in the past, uh, the mainspring might have broken in this watch because they are susceptible to breaking uh, because of that extra power. And um, somebody may have replaced this with a slightly less uh, powerful mainspring. And so that can reduce your, the magnitude of your amplitude, um, which is usually what people consider to be the, uh, one of the standards for, um, for these watches. But you have accuracy. So yes, your amplitude might be a little low, but your app your accuracy is still as good as the watch can deliver. So I'll show you, hopefully, I'm, I'm gonna look at a few just to see if there are any tweaks that I can do to sort of ramp up that value. Um, your hairspring looks good. It looks like somebody may have manipulated it a little bit here near the stud at one point. It's got some light scr scratching. I looked at it under my real high power microscope. Um, but it's not, you know, the positional error is minimal. Uh, which means that it's it's not warped and it's not uh, out of poise. So I like what I see with your hairspring and your balance. It's nice and flat and everything looks fine. Um, so that's not the source of your low amplitude. Sometimes it can get a little out of sorts. And I've looked at the distance, I've sort of calibrated the distance across the uh, hairspring coils, and they are all very good to within, you know, you know, microns of each other um, in terms of the distance between the coils, which can oftentimes lead to problems. But this even has an adjustment where you can adjust the contact point of the of this uh, adjusting arm, um, and it's it's right. So that's fine. It's it's really about the mainspring power. 
And so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna keep looking and keep digging um, and we'll see what we can get at the end. Um, one thing I was able to do, which is a positive, is there is your brand new crystal uh, in your watch, which looks really good. Uh, I was able to do this uh, without doing any kind of um, issue with the watch, didn't have to do much, it looks great. You know, this case is, is again, like you said, it's not as, it's not as perfect as the, as the 8010, you have some slight scratches and things. Um, but again, a lot of character, really a beautiful watch, um, and so that's, that's going in the right direction. So I'll, I'll keep you informed, um, I'll keep this coming, and uh, we'll keep going, we'll see what we get. All right, so I'm looking at the final stages here of your watch, and I don't know if you remember in the, in the teardown, I said, man, these screws are super tight, which is kind of what you want to be. Well, whoever Mr. Z was, who did something with your barrel and engraved junk to your main plate, I think he also made your screws too tight. As I was putting things back together, look on the left-hand side of the screw head, left-hand side of that, um, of the regular place where you put your screwdriver. You see how the reflection has one shiny and then one not shiny? Your screw head is cracked. I've never seen a cracked screw. So whoever put too much torque on this did it to the point where the screw actually broke the screw head. Now, luckily, um, I was able to get this off and I have a replacement which I put on your movement, but that could have been bad. Um, having a screw head break, I mean, I've seen screws break on the shaft, but I've never seen a head crack. So, send this back to you all right Brian we have reached a pretty amazing point in the restoration and service of your watches um, both are done uh, I could cannot <laughs> put into words uh, how beautiful and how amazing I think these two watches are. They are certainly the cornerstone of e any, either of them would be the cornerstone for, for any collection of Seikos. Um, so let's just talk for a second. Um, here's your 8010. Absolutely came out flawless, perfect, beautiful. This is definitely the keeper of the collection, you bet. This is the one. Um, hold on to this watch it is something special uh, numbers are great um, you know with with either of these two watches some some caveats of course always about service and that is that uh, mainsprings are the heart of this watch it is the thing that drives that high beat movement and if you don't replace it or find a way to redo it you're at the mercy of the mainspring now luckily, this watch, uh, its mainspring is sealed and it is remains sealed. Hopefully it will have a long service life. Um, it's had a long service life already. It's 50 years old and uh, doing, doing well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you have a, have a, a timer to put the to watch on to, to look at it, you know, its resting value is going to be close to 260. Um, you know, in the beginning of the morning when it's run down a little bit or there's some, you know, whatever, it, it may be 2, 2.30. So, you know, that range is totally acceptable and, and really is a very nice value. Um, the, the thing is the accuracy. These watches are super accurate. I've got this regulated to within plus or minus two to three seconds per day, um, which you can do with this. Positional uh, accuracy is great. Uh, you can, you know, fine-tune and tweak these things to, uh, to such a high level. It's amazing. All right, let's move over to your 8000. Again, a gorgeous, phenomenal watch. I was able to get the new crystal in. Looks fantastic. Uh, it's nice and clean. You know, there are some history issues with this watch. Um, somebody, I don't know who, Mr. Z was in there. I found his uh, servicing mark actually. It was one that we, we had seen in the beginning. Um, a couple things. So, great watch, 
really nice, keeps very accurate time, is as accurate as this one for sure. The amplitude, eh, it's not where I like to see these watches. You're approaching at rest, you know, after a day of winding, perhaps 240, maybe, maybe, 230. It's going to rest after a day of, of not being worn, somewhere in the, you know, 220s? I don't know. You know, um, again, it's the mainspring. It's the mainspring that is the heart, and it drives this movement. And if it's not where it should be, it's, it's not going to do the right thing. Now, um, I synchronized these, and they've been running for a while, and they are doing really well. It's very cool to see two watches of this caliber, you know, sitting here chugging along. A couple other little things, just cosmetically. Um, you have some marring and some scratching. Um, you know, I didn't, again, I'm not polishing your watches. They are phenomenal the way they are. Um, one tiny, tiny thing, and, and you, I, I think you need to be under magnification to really see this well, but you know, your second hand always sweeps up a little bit to avoid your, your minute hand. This one has a slight little variation in the reflection very near the base, and I don't know if that's a design error or maybe somebody that did the service, this has been serviced a few times, might have put it on and bent it up to, you know, I don't know what they did. Anyway, it's, it's so minor that unless you're under a loop and really, really being excruciatingly annoying about it, like I am sometimes about these things, um, you won't see it. It, it. It's, you know, it's imperceptible, but unless you're really looking, looking, looking closely, um, you may just never see it. Anyway, I just thought I'd point that out just to uh, let you know. Your crown um, has unscrewed. Um, you're lucky, in a sense, because if you had tried to set the date on this too much, uh, you would have pe perhaps lost your crown, uh, which is uh, never good. Uh, so I was able to, to re-epoxy this in place, and so that's nice and secure and, and should be good for, for a good long time. New seals everywhere. Um, your bracelet's cleaned up beautifully. You know, you've got some, you know, just usage. I mean, come on, these things are phenomenal. Uh, all your end links are great. Um, your spring bars, I didn't put them in the shot here, but they're over here too. Um, I'm going to send you back some just stellar watches. They are phenomenal. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to work on them. I really, uh, it was it was somewhat nerve-wracking just because they're so gorgeous and I, I didn't want to mess them up. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, everything came out, came out great as far as I can tell. I hope you're happy and um, thank you again.